Hey everyone, I'm so excited to be um, speaking here. It's cold, so I'm gonna uh, do a lot of uh, kinesthetics if you'd like to join me while I'm talking. Um, so uh, the, the last panel made an assumption that um, everybody knows what Kubernetes is, um, et cetera, and that, um, I, I am not going to make any assumptions that anyone knows about Kubernetes or anything. This is a real, uh, this is a use case about how um, we're using all this, these things. So hopefully I hit the sweet spot of being uh, both too technical and not technical enough to really maximize the level of disappointment. Um, my name's Michelle Krejci. I'm a warrior princess, but I'm also a software engineer. Um, I work at a company called Pantheon Systems. More on that in a second. Um, I get really excited when anyone follows me on Twitter. Um, it does something for my ego. Um, uh, really happy to be here today. I work for a company called Pantheon, um, and we specialize in managing and hosting PHP apps, specifically Drupal or WordPress. Anyone heard of any of those? Yeah, cool. So um, PHP, obviously everyone's favorite language. Um, don't disrespect your elders. There's a lot of really great sites that deploy um, PHP apps, a lot of content management systems, a lot of universities, a lot of hospitals, a lot of really content-rich systems. Um, here are some of the cool logos that we get, we're proud to host. We have about um, 250,000, uh, 300,000 uh, um, sites that we host. Um, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about a use case. Um, at the end of uh, January, um, President Trump signed an executive order to um, prevent people um, who already have green cards from entering the, the country. Um, and this created chaos. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers this. There were protests at the airports. There were lawyers showing up to airports, and those lawyers were from the ACLU. Um, the ACLU was supporting uh, the, the, the efforts to fight against this executive order, and within one hour, um, the ACLU website, which typically sees about 100 people go to their website a minute, um, spiked up to 4,000 people per minute, 4,000 um, hits, um, and a site that typically brings in uh, 3 million a year. So ACLU gets 300, 3 million a year in donations. In one day, got 25 million donations. And ACLU is on our platform. And uh, it was cool, because I was on duty that weekend. Um, uh, by the way, if you want to follow along with me, I'm, I'm, this is deployed to um, Heroku. Um, so if you want to follow deploying um, PHP apps to, uh, to K8, you can follow me there. Um, but obviously, it's something like that that has a very low, um, low interest um, from, from, from our perspective most of the year to suddenly spike without ever going down. And it's really important um, that their business is up. They, never, they don't know, um, they, they couldn't possibly have predicted that. So that's the kind of problem space that we're in. Um, in this rich uh, 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what an anatom uh, the anatomy of a PHP app on G Google Cloud Platform. So it's not just um, Kubernetes. Uh, we, we're making full use of the Google Cloud Platform stack for a number of reasons that I won't get into. But um, I'll do a brief show and tell, brief, 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 um, enough to, that you won't even notice my mistakes. Um, and then I want to talk to you about, about discoveries I've made with Kubernetes and then um, lessons around um, container-centric architecture in, in this kind of space. OK, quickly, uh, uh, anatomy of a PHP app on GCP. I, I want to say quickly, um, I'm going to talk to you about um, PHP apps specifically, um, but our platform itself, the, the software that manages our platform, uh, is uh, Python, Node.js, um, a lot of Go. Um, and the, uh, the metaphors here uh, um, that we use for our client sites or are specialized for our client sites around PHP um, can also extend very easily to any app. <coughs> oh, I'm going to cough really loud into this. Um, all right, so Google, you'll, you'll need a Google Cloud Platform account for this particular exercise, um, a Cloud SQL instance for persistence. <coughs> you'll have to spin up a container engine cluster. If you can all do this really quickly, um, uh, um, create a cloud uh, registry, and um, you'll need the G Cloud command line tools. So essentially, what I'm trying to say here is, um, you, you're gonna 
if you want to if you want to follow along, if you want to do what I'm I'm doing here, there's a lot of like clearing your throat work in terms of finding a um, 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 all of all of these plugins. <coughs> but then you're going to need a container definition. So uh, we have a PHP app, so it makes sense that we have a very specific PHP Docker-based container. Um, in this particular example, I'm just using Google App Engine's um, base container. So this is uh, Google maintains base image. Uh, your base image for a container is um, crucial because um, <coughs> Katie, you're here. Um, uh, the, your base image is essential because uh, this is your runtime environment. This is a good runtime environment. It has security updates. It has the right PHP version in it. Um, this is the LAMP stack that I want. <laughs> Thank you. I just, I just have a cold. Um, I'll have a cold out loud for all of you. Um, <coughs> and um, uh, for this particular example, um, that you can uh, look at more closely over here on GitHub. Um, this is uh, Krejci at um, D8 um, Kube. Um, I'm, um, I'm going to, um, it, it's going to detect my composer lock, which is just like a package manager. A lot of applications have package manager, so, it, so I can have a very lightweight repository of just the composer lock. And it will run my composer install, run my package manager. I have some post install scripts, and I'm specifying an environment variable here. Um, this this um, particular container is really cool because I can bring my own web server um, overrides, so I can override some things for my nginx conf. Um, so my web server can have some very specialized things. I can control it within my repository, and I can set some PHP ini um, overrides. This, is, this means that clients can have a very um, safe um, container base. So their container base can be, um, they can trust that it that, um, will have all of the security patches applied to it, um, but then they can override very specific windows of things that would be particularly relevant to their app. Let me just... All right. So then the deployment, we have a, so we have a container. We've defined what it's going to look like for my app to run within that contained space. Now what do I do with this? How do I get this onto the cloud? The workflow, um, and this is very similar for just about any kind of app, you build the artifact. The artifact is the container. The, the app that lives inside the container is the artifact of your deployment. Then you're going to push that artifact to a registry. In my example, I'm using Google Cloud's registry. There's other um, um, container registries. Docker has um, a container registry. Quay is another good um, registry. I'm pushing mine up to um, the, the cloud registry. And then I'm updating the reference to that artifact within my Kubernetes orchestration. C Kubernetes itself, and um, I, I actually, uh, it took me a moment to, un like, to understand this when I was first learning about Kube. Kube has nothing to do with containers per se. It's just an orchestration tool. It's just defining. A lot of nods here. Uh, maybe we've all had the dope moment, but um, just, just to make that clear, dope moment is over. Um, and then you apply the changes. Uh, more specifically, what that looks like is you're going to build the thing. So Docker build my thing. Again, this is a, um, a Docker image with my app running inside of it, um, where um, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so, so build the thing, build a Docker image, push the image. In this case, I'm pushing it to um, cloud registry. And then I'm going to be updating my kube deployment reference um, to point specifically to this number. All right, this is. Uh, this is a lesson learned here, but when I when I build um, when I build an image, I give it a number, an incremental number. I really like to use my um, uh, I, I use um, Circle CI as my continuous integration tool, and that has an environment variable for the build number. And I actually use the build number um, for the images that I create, and I really like that workflow. I do not like it when people reference the latest image um, because I don't have control over what's being referenced. Um, uh, I highly recommend that you're very specific about the name of your image, and you tag it very specifically. I've, I, I really enjoy using the continuous integration um, build numbers. All right, so we're going to update um, our kube deployment. 
and then we'll apply the changes, and that's a part of the Kube workflow. All right, this is another way of describing what I have just talked about. Over here on the left, these are your managed assets. This is what lives in my repository. This is the only thing that I need to worry about. This is my deployment. We'll take a, you can take a closer look on my um, GitHub repository since we don't have much time. Um, but this deployment YAML is what defines my containers. It defines my replica sets. Um, we'll take a closer look later. Um, up here is my service YAML. This is just a load balancer to describe a port of entry. Uh, not everything, uh, again, we're in serverless states, not everything's going to have a public entry point. Um, there's plenty of services that will only run internally, but with the Drupal app, it has a exposed port to the world. For that, I need a load balancer. So this is the only thing that exists inside my repository that defines what this is going to look like in the cloud. From there, when I push it to um, with Kube, it points to a, um, a SQL proxy, which helps me connect with Cloud SQL, which runs in Google Cloud Platform. It's a Drupal 8 app, which connects with Container Engine. And then there's a load balancer as a public entry point. Over here, this Google Cloud Platform doesn't need to be, this could be Azure, this can be um, AWS. Um, I'm happy, I happen to use um, Google Cloud Platform, but um, to give you a visual, this is what sits in your repository. This is what Kube does for you. And what happens here is a bring your own. Oh, a demo. OK. Here I am inside of my, uh, my, my Drupal 8. Uh, you can see that I wasn't lying to you. I've got my, my Nginx with me, my PHP INI. I have defined. Um, a deployment for this. Um, the coolest thing I can show you is, so this is my, this is my deployment. Um, I won't get too much into it, but it has a, can everyone see that okay? How does that look? Bit small or big? Do this if it needs to be bigger. Bigger, bigger. Good? All right, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> All right, some highlights. It has um, two replicator sets. What that means is I'm going to need two, two of them. Um, and Kube is able to manage the, the, um, the load balancing of each of these. Um, the, um, there's, a, there's a rolling update. We'll take a look at that in a second, what that means. Um, but I can tell you uh, briefly that when I'm rolling out a deployment, um, I'm, I'm going to keep the old deployment running and um, uh, bring up one pod at a time. That means that um, I have an opportunity to make sure that the deployment is right. And if, the, if one of the deployments is failing, it still has um, a pod running, <coughs> um, a, le a legacy pod at that point running at the same time that the new pod is rolling out. And then I have two containers um, defined here. I have my uh, container that I just pushed to the Google Cloud registry. So this, is, this points to a very specific cloud registry. It has a tag. Um, again, in this case, I, um, I, I use the continuous integration build numbers, but here I have it hard-coded. I have exposed a port. Um, I will refer to that in my, um, in my load balancer. And then I also have another container for the um, Cloud SQL proxy. Um, Drupal, WordPress, these PHP apps, they sit on top of the SQL store. And I'm using Cloud SQL as my SQL store. And in order for that to work, um, I need to create a, a proxy instance. So Google has a, um, a Google proxy uh, container that I can use to connect with their, um, with their Cloud SQL instance. All right, and then quickly, the load balancer, much easier. Um, the, 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 um, the load balancer is referring to a target port that I had aliased HTTP server in my deployment, and it just exposes port 80 to the public. It's pr pretty straightforward. All right. Definitely the most showy thing that I can show you with um, Kubernetes is to update the replicator set. So what I've just done, actually, 
what I've just done is I upped, upped the replicator set to three. Um, is that going to be showing enough? Probably not. Let's make it four. Take it to 11. Um, all right, so I, I, I don't need to rebuild my uh, container, thank God, because that takes forever. Um, because this is, yeah, anyway, that's another, another issue. So I'm not going to build the container. Let's let the container already exists. It's on, on Google Cloud. But I have m made a change to Kube. Um, so I'm going to apply those changes. Um, that's what that command looks like um, to a namespace. We'll get to that in a second. <coughs> All right. Cool. So you, you see that it's um, starting to build a, uh, a fourth container, Cr creating a container. We could do watch to watch that go quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, so it's bringing everything up into a replicator set of four. If I were to have reduced it to two, it would bring it down to two. There's a lot more I can show you with, uh, like with replicator sets. Um, but the important thing um, here is to know that you can specify a policy about how you want things to expand and contract. One of my favorite things that Kube does is has something called a health check, which allows me to specify what it means for the container to be running. What does it look like for my container to be healthy? Which is extremely important for someone who works at infrastructure. How do I know that your app is running correctly? And um, being able to have that opportunity to have conversations about what it means to look like to run a healthy container um, and be able to auto scale according to what the health of the container looks like. Okay, we don't have time for, for um, anything else, really. So quickly back to some, some lessons learned. Um, some lessons learned from container-centric container architecture. The last group was, was talking a lot about all of the opportunities um, that, uh, that are opened up because of the possibilities of containers, because of the possibilities of, of being able to orchestrate containers at scale this way. Um, and, and some things that, um, that I've really taken from my experience um, really delving into containers and then bringing it back to these um, PHP communities is the concept of production being an artifact of development. The, the, the repositories now that, that, um, that represent these apps are instructions on how to build an app. It didn't used to be that way, but now people's, uh, like my repository, for example, does not look like a working Drupal directory. What it looks like is a bunch of instructions to build a working Drupal directory. So it has Composer in it, which needs to run. People are compiling their, their SAS to CSS. There's, there's uh, grunt tasks and gulp tasks and, and MIG files. There's instructions on how to build the thing. And those inst that, that makes the development workflow amazing. It makes, it makes the repositories very developer-centric. But what you need to be able to do now is define a step in between developing the thing and actually serving up the thing. Um, and containers allow you to do that. Containers are the running, working runtime of your thing. Um, and being able to actually deploy an artifact, a stateless system, um, a stateless running system that is the product of development is. Uh, um, a huge aha moment. <coughs> and the, the problem of, you know, I, I had worked with Chef for a long time on Ansible, and taking, taking A and, and having B changes to A, and you have all of these things that needed to run, to run updates, and you're running changes to a system on that system. Trying to make A B is extremely difficult, and it fails most of the time. But just being able to replace A with B is extremely powerful, and it means I can undo it very quickly. A cool um, thing I wish I had a chance to show you with the demo is when a deployment fails, I can quickly un undo deploy, and in two seconds, I can re revert it back to the exact state that it had been before. I don't have to alter the state, I'm just, replace I'm just yeah, moving from A to B, and then B back to A without changing state. <coughs> it encourages a microservice thinking. 
the, the PHP um, world that I'm talking about here, uh, the, this content management system, this is a, this is a content heavy world that's very monolithic. In, you know, Drupal is a monolith, WordPress is a monolith, but it doesn't want to be that way anymore. It's, it, it wants to be an API, it wants to be really good at, at managing just content, and, and now everyone wants everything else. They want you know, newsletters, event planning, uh, learning resources, and letting that PHP app be good at the thing that it's good at, and then using other services, other workers, observers, maybe using PubSub to get metrics, maybe connecting with a third-party um, resource, which is another thing that Kub allows you to do. It encourages this sort of um, Lego piecing together, um, and you don't need to rely on your one monolith anymore. And we're almost, I, one more slide, one more slide. No one's telling me to go, so that's where I'll just keep going. Okay, um, in, in, um, here are my favorite things about Kube. Whoops. Here are my favorite things about Kube. Everything is an object. It, it just blows I, every day. I'm like, oh, everything's an object. Namespaces are an object. Secrets are an object. Configuration management is an object. Um, namespaces, I, use, I, I was deploying to the Krejci namespace. I, I can also deploy, I can make namespaces at will. I name... I create namespaces based on pull request numbers so that every pull request deploys its own um, service and I can do integration testing on it. Um, I, use, I have a different project for the development space versus the, um, um, versus the production space. I already talked about rolling back. I already talked about health checks. All right, I'm done. Uh, thank, you, thank you so much. Oh, I, I have a question in the back. Maybe you can uh, tw tweet me. Right, cool, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Mansa. And there's something wonderful about a, a presentation that, I n again, it's so hard to cram what is meant to be kind of a 40-minute demo uh, into 20 minutes, so thank you so much. What's even better is that that entire demo, um, as you saw, was hosted, so any of you can follow along, can, can get those snippets of code, can like re-familiarize that yourself with your own pace. So you know, that's a talk that gives more than just the 20 minutes, um, and I've, I've tweeted the link, and obviously follow Samantha on Twitter because it, it, it makes her feel all warm and and fuzzy, uh, that'd be that'd be wonderful.